advice for um, ASL students? ASL students, and deaf culture is extremely important to, to immerse yourself in. It's not, it's not just about the language. You have to learn about deaf culture. And the language is part of deaf culture. And it's a very special and cherished language to them. And you really need to take it seriously. Uh, deaf culture is just so rich. And, and learning ASL is very beautiful. And certainly, I think anyone should learn it. I mean, I'm so excited that ASL is probably the number three most used language in the United States. Is that right? Is that what you're ASL is the number three language in the U.S. In the world. All right. In the world. Can't be the world, right? No. Um, three. The third most used language in the United States. And, um, and to learn the language, as I said, you need to learn about that culture as well. <coughs> Thank you. Hold on, real quick. And at, you also have to know that um, uh, you get your name signed from a deaf person, right? Mm -hmm. So, let me get the name signed. Um, I don't have a question. I just want to say how much you inspired me. Um, I was an L Word watcher. Mm -hmm. And yes, I love the show. And I just want to say, as a proud lesbian, thank you for. Um, your role as Jody is very inspiring, and it made me want to learn more ASL. I grew up learning ASL with my mom, being an ESC teacher, but um, I just wanted to take more classes and get more knowledgeable about the culture. And I'm in ASL too now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Keep up the good work. And love your shoes. <laughs> 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 if I get it back, back, I'll wear different shoes for you. You can give them to me now. Hello. My name is Jamie. Hi. I wanted to know if you had any advice for a female that wants to be in the film industry. Female in the film industry, the film business, is one top, top place to be. I think though the doors in Hollywood is more receptive to women, and particularly executives. Like for example, the president of ABC is a woman, and of the whole network. Um, but the whole industry isn't like that. I mean, going into acting. Um, going to a great film school, film school, learning as much as you can about acting, find what you're passionate about, work your ass off, get yourself known, uh, network as much as you can, make yourself known is how you do it. Just be ambitious, and California, unfortunately, California is the place to be. You have to go to California. So maybe someday you'll be my studio boss. <laughs> Who knows? Thank you. Uh, I have a question for the two of you, actually. Um, what do you think you would be doing if you weren't acting? And Jack, what would you be doing if she wasn't acting? <laughs> I actually had it. No, no, what would I do if you weren't acting and we never met? What would I do? That would be so much better. She's <laughs> <laughs> be a cop at one point in my life. I wanted to be a teacher at another point. I wanted to, well, I mean, I had lots of dreams. Um, I wasn't great as a high school student. I was going through too much, playing too hard, <coughs> did the wrong things all the way through high school. I'm amazed I'm even standing here today. <coughs> and yet I know most of you are who are sober understand what it would be like to go through that whole part of your life. And maybe if you're not, you don't, whatever. Um, but I 
how we would own a business, how we, I don't know, but how would we be stuck at home being married to my old boyfriend? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. But not easy to say. To my old boyfriend who wanted to be a shoe store salesman. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I actually was at NYU getting my PhD in educational media. I think I wanted to be a professor at NYU. And I was studying at school, and then I happened to be working in an apartment that shared the same office with the Deputy's Rehab Program. When the call came in, it said somebody's looking for an interpreter. And I was always interested in extra work. I would interpret for Broadway shows and stuff like that. So I said, I'll do it. And the person said, oh, well, this guy, meaning her old boyfriend, wants a woman to interpret for him, for her. And I said, what? He's like a six foot two, big, tall, Gentile guy, a five foot two Jew. What does he care? <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. It has to be a woman. I said, fine. So I gave the name of three women who I knew were out of town. <laughs> they called me back and said, we can't find anybody. And I said, well, what am I supposed to do? And they said, okay, you come. And to meet her the first time wasn't to interpret, but to take her shopping. That was the first time I met her. And then we hit it off. So, probably be a, a, a professor at NYU. I took him out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was more interesting to go to the Oscars than to push around books. Yeah. <laughs> Shame. Yes. <laughs> Hi, it's an honor to meet you. My name is Jenny. This is my sign name, Jenny. And the reason why that's my sign name, it was given to me by a deaf person, but I'm very heavily involved in writing. I write books for young adults. So I became an interpreter because you know I want to write books that have involved elements of deaf culture and the deaf community. Uh, I started writing when I was about four, really, but seriously, um, when I was in college. And so I want to write books about deaf culture. And so I figured I should learn about sign language, and that's why I ended up getting so involved with the deaf community. And um, people in the deaf community said, wow, you're a good signer, you should become an interpreter. And I thought, no, that's not what I want to do. Why would I want to do that? But eventually I found that I love it, and I still do. So I want to know, you wrote a book for young, young adults and young children. So from your writer's perspective, what advice can you give? <laughs> well, I remember when I was 11 years old, I think I might have been having a bad day at the time. And I was so frustrated. And I think I probably was being bullied that day bullied by my neighbors, and I said to myself, when I write, when I grow up, I'm going to write a book to tell the world that it's okay to be deaf. And that stuck with me. <laughs> and that eventually led to my writing my first book, Deaf Child Crossing. And because it got such, it was so well received, and I wrote two additional books in that series, but it's not easy to write. Uh, the first one, I, I tried writing it myself, like 200 pages, and I showed it to Jack. And they gave it to anyone else know I showed it to Jack. And he went, yes, he got it, because of course he knows deaf people and he knows deaf culture and language. My English isn't that great, but he got it. So he said very, very discreetly, just delicately, perhaps what you should do, Marty, because those in the writing world, those who work as literates, they may not get what you do. Why don't you sit with me, sign it, and then I can translate it. That would have to make the process easier. So that's what I did. And then when I did two additional books, the, the second books, also books, children's books, I worked with a professional writer who then I just gave him, we gave each other ideas and we created the books. As it pertains to my autobiography, um, I just told her everything through Jack and another interpreter about my life to this co-writer, Betsy Sharp, who was wonderful. And she wrote it in four months, the complete book, three, three or four months. And uh, it, there's a lot left to tell people, but I think I'm going to keep it for another book. <laughs> so there you go. But anyway, yeah, it was writing, the writing was interesting. Uh, I don't know how many times I have write a book. I mean, it happens all the time. Happens now. Good luck. Thank you. Last one. Thank you for coming to UCF. I guess I'm the last in the line. Thank you for coming to UCF. We want your opinion. Many students.
students here taking ASL? How can they become effective allies between the hearing and the deaf community? Maybe some people in the hearing world are afraid to help or how to get involved. How can we be effective allies between the two cultures? It's very simple. Go Starbucks. Go ask you. Where is it we can meet your friends? What is it that we can do to get together? <coughs> Bring people together. And I mean, it's just like the same way. I mean, hearing people might be afraid of deaf people because they want to be able to learn the language, communicate the language that you communicate it. It's certainly understandable that they would be conflicted because, or they might feel like they're a fool because they don't know. You know, it's like, hi, how are you? I, this is all I know how to say in sign language. And this deaf person might be judging me. It's not about better or worse than the other judging people or their signing skills. And it seems that the only way that hearing people, I mean, hearing people would be surprised when deaf people are more than thrilled to see another hearing person learning sign language. But at the same time, you have to understand about deaf culture too. It's just not a wrong language. So uh, where does ASL come from? It comes from who we are, it comes from where we come from, it comes from experience, it comes from all of that. So they need to understand that and get involved in that. Uh, my daughter doesn't want to take Spanish or French in high school right now. She's in 11th grade. So I thought, well, why not take an, an American Sign class? And so our high school, they just cut the ASL class program. So I thought, well, why not go to the college level? They actually offer classes after school, so she's going to community college after school to take ASL classes. And she's having so much fun. Um, I said, are you meeting deaf people? You know, a lot of my deaf friends, she has the advantage of meeting them. But someone has to have the courage to set up uh, clubs or community parties or whatever, be, be creative. It's not just about feeling better or worse just because you're hearing or deaf or whatever. I just meet, meet, just push people together. Push them together. It's the best way. We don't bite. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, that people don't bite. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. You are great. You're wonderful. And please come and meet me.